Welcome to the Towson University College of Fine Arts and Communications Drones and Droids podcast. Today we'll hear from Dr. David White as he tells us about a science fiction novel that changed the way he perceived language and the code behind it. Snow Crash, a 1992 novel by Neal Stevenson, was a science fiction novel that is both a satire of cyberpunk and also advances science fiction into the virtual world, which in this book is called the metaverse. The book tackles the idea of a virus being released in virtual reality, but having an effect on the real lives of the characters in the physical world. The book, as satire, the main character's name is Hero Protagonist, also had a lot of impacts within the technological communities. It popularized the use of the term avatar. It also built this online world that was uh, the inspiration for things that we know today, such as Xbox Live. I first read this book in undergrad, and it really changed how I perceived language and the power of language. Uh, and the power of language that exists both in the stories that we tell and also in the codes that power a lot of technology here in the 21st century. Snow Crash, Neil Stevenson connects the very old and the very new. And while most people have latched on to the technological advances, I've found that I'm really interested in this broadening of our idea of language to span thousands of years of human history. In Snow Crash, Stevenson proposes that in biblical times, specifically around the time of the Tower of Babel, certain, quote, magicians somehow understood the connection between language and the brain and knew how to manipulate it, the same way a hacker, knowing the secrets of a computer, can write code to control it. He posits that the Tower of Babel myth represents a diversification of languages in order to prevent the spreading of viruses through the common language that existed before the tower fell. He also notes that even computers have machine language, binary, and, quote, when you program in machine language, you are controlling the computer at its brainstem, the very root of its existence. The message of this book has changed for me as time goes by. Initially, as a storyteller and playwright, this book helped me understand the potency of language. Historically, the people trying to crack the programmable code of humanity have been preachers, politicians, advertisers, storytellers, great orators, or people using oration, fusing words and tone to embed specific ways of living onto their listeners. But times have changed, and how we receive news, language, all of these ideas has changed. Now, the people who are experimenting with the programming of humanity are the Silicon Valley types, and they seem to have found a way to skip the orality and begin to manipulate the brainstem, thereby programming people to interact with their products in ways that are deeply compelling, but often mysterious to the users. A couple of years ago, a guy named Tristan Harris, he was a former Google philosopher staffer, who uh, left Google to discuss what he saw as the manipulative practices of app developers. And he used a very similar language to what Stevenson used in Snow Crash in 1992 when Harris was describing app developers in a, quote, race to the bottom of the brain stem. And this race was to effectively program users to continually return to the app in a pattern that closely resembles addiction. All of this was being studied through programs such as Stanford University's Persuasive Technology Lab, where people who have found an app such as Instagram studied and discovered how the codes that they write into computers can impact the daily lives of the users in the physical world. Snow Crash has now gone, for me, from being a personal journey about how, as a writer, a playwright, and storyteller, this language is powerful, but now it also impacts me as a teacher. There's great responsibilities in the ideas that we embed onto our audience or our students. And because of how language shapes experiences, we have to be really careful with how we embed and what we are programming people to go into the world and do. This also provides me with a way of looking at the contemporary world, with knowledge of the languages behind the languages we see the binary behind the code, and how these languages that we might not be reading at all might be shaping our lives without us knowing what it is doing. Mm -hmm.